Well, boys, you might be wondering, we're looking at the pile of uh, things on my desk. What is going on? What are you doing? What is all this? What is this nonsense? Why is there so much shit piled up? Well, I'm going to talk about something that people are overlooking in their... I, I see these videos popped up on my thing on YouTube recently about people preparing for doomsday or whatever wars and things. Uh, you know, these people that have all the guns and the bullets and the, they're insane. Those people like the ones in Oregon. Yeah, those well, there are people with good intentions looking out for their families. And they say, oh, well, it's just the radios and the flashlight and uh, food and put it somewhere and yada, yada, yada. Okay, fine. That's fine and dandy. But there's something that gets overlooked in our modern society of semiconductors. See, all these things that I have here, all the way to the diode. All semiconductors and people don't take into account is let's look at a couple of events. I'm going to rule out natural events because natural events have happened on in the past and things have carried on. Or, you know, ruling out things like solar flares and whatnot because we're talking about EMPs, electromagnetic pulse. I'm pretty sure this has been covered, but people fail to take into account that modern things that we use all have parts in them that can easily be disabled by an MP. Now, the reason I am going to rule out solar flares is, one, we've been hit with some pretty nasty solar flares in the modern past, and they've caused some isolated incidents with the power grids and communications in countries where things are so class A. Um, that's to be expected. You could probably fart on their power lines and the lights go out. Um, <coughs> you know, we have an atmosphere for a reason. And if a solar flare does cause massive electrical electronic failure, chances are we're not going to live long enough to experience because it's going to boil our atmosphere off and we're going to die from it. Like uh, at the end of the mov movie, uh, what was it? Knowing. You ever seen that one? Watch the end of that movie. That's what happens when you lose the ozone layer and a solar flare hits. <coughs> so we ain't got to worry about that. You know, it's all, all over with. So we're going to look at man-made EMPs. Nuclear-induced. Um, you know, what happens right before the ground and air burst exchange in a nuclear war. Or a specifically designed weapon for EMP that we know people are developed so have developed excuse me <coughs> now you have your radios you might have something like this most of you may have something like this god help you or this maybe FRS stuff um yeah you might think you might as I'm older you might have something like this this old MPI uh, you might have some Motorola's here, or at the very least, you just want to monitor, see what the cops are doing, whatever. You might have your own police scanner, <coughs> whatever. They all have batteries, of course. You know, in your prepper bag, you might have a flashlight. You know, in the case of mine, has the little that. <laughs> it's got a pretty bright torch in there. Okay. okay. This is why I use it work, you know. I don't need the stun gun, but uh, some of you may have, you know, more technical people may have a uh, one of these old meter or digital. I don't have my digital here to show you, but you've probably seen it in other videos. But even this one. Most of your two-way radios will have a battery pack. All right. Your flashlights will have LEDs, unless they're the old tungsten type. This is not a flashlight thing. This is just a halogen, a 12 volt uh, filament bulb. It's on hand now, but you know, that'll be fine. What's what all on this table is going to survive an EMP? Can anyone name them out? I can. None of this will. None of it. 
<clears throat> diodes gone walkie talkies police scanners gone <clears throat> your high dollar LED torch flashlight gone why would it be gone your cheap Chinese radio that you're going to be relying on to get your family to your prepper retreat gone your automobile gone your phone off even the battery packs lithium ion battery packs will no longer function unless you know how to open these up and safely extract the batteries you're not going to be able to charge them there won't be any grid left to charge on some solar power systems will be completely ruined you don't take into account that an EMP affects electronics on a microscopic level. All these LEDs, transistors, transistor packs, <coughs> they're all semiconductors. All of them. Sure, you'll fry microchips, you'll fry your transistors. You're also going to fry diodes. LEDs are diodes. They just make light. They won't work. The only light that is truly going to be reliable after all this shit is going to be something like that. Or if you're lucky enough to still have some tungsten bulbs, flashlights around. <coughs> but good luck on those lasting very long because, of, you know, even battery packs like this, you got to be able to charge them. And the cheap solar power things that you buy on eBay have charge controllers, which incorporate transistors diodes and chips that will be fried they will be completely useless unless you are tech savvy and know how to you know get them to work again um, lithium ion battery packs have control circuitry built into the packs themselves circuit boards to protect them from overcharge and under discharging under over discharge and overcharge once that chip is gone, those, that is useless, and it's very dangerous to wire directly onto the cells. They, these batteries, without that circuitry, can explode like a little bomb and create some really nasty problems for you. <coughs> People need to consider these things while you're thinking about your doomsday scenario even an analog multimeter with its delicate metering system can be fried that coil in there an emp works on inductors you know and this is why i say even vacuum tube equipment even tubes as unlikely as it may sound as unlikely as it may sound even tubes have been reported in the past during atomic testing. Even tubes have failed. Induction windings in radios, old tube radios, the EMP hit it, acted like a step up, kind of like a jewel thief, basically, and fried the tubes. So unless you've got a stockpile of tubes and know how to work on radios, then you might be okay, but... Even vacuum tubes, you know, maybe not from the MP itself, but the other circuitry boosting the current, backfeeding current into these. These things are pretty robust, but they are delicate in their own special way, just like microprocessors. You can fry a tube by putting too much voltage across it, just like you can a transistor. You know, and you got your little cheap flashlights from the dollar store. Yeah, they work fine now. You know, when there's a blackout, you know, changing the breakers and you're you know, flipping the breaker back on, your lights go out, whatever. But in a real situation, you know, LEDs, <laughs> all these nine diodes in this will poof. They'll, they'll short out. They won't work anymore. No one, I don't think anyone has ever considered that with LED lights and things <clears throat> and how this stuff works. If it's a military designed thing, they've already tested it. They know what it's going to destroy and it's going to be everything. Um, you know, 
even some battery packs. I mean, when it gets down to some battery packs not even working after it, you know, that's pretty brutal when that happens. You know, don't expect your phone or anything to work for sure. <coughs> so, that's one thing that needs to be considered while you're preparing for whatever it is you're preparing for. You know, I usually just prepare for bad weather and fucking whatever I know what's coming every year here. Hurricane season, tornadoes, things like that. I'm not preparing for the end of the fucking world because if it happens, it happens. There's nothing I can do about it. I really don't want to survive a nuclear war. So, <coughs> you know, but for those of you who think you're Rambo or whatever, there's another thing you need to consider if an EMP is not used and things like this work. You need to consider something else. Now, <coughs> having an amateur radio license is not a bad thing. Having GMRS license is not a bad thing in the now. If this is a government co to like collapse, not, not an attack from another country or whatever, <coughs> if this is like some of that conspiracy New World Order shit, you know, Hitler stuff, whatever, where they start rounding people up, well, you know, first people they're going to round up are the registered gun owners, of course. You know, the biggest fucking threat. And their families. Is this going to be guilty by association at that point? Um, immediate family. Automatic. Uh, then they're going to start rounding up FCC license holders. Again, you may not think you're a threat by having a license to operate amateur radio or commercial GMRS, whatever. <coughs> but you are, because, see, now you can wirelessly get news and information out of an area they may not want you to be doing it in. <sighs> Laws will not apply. There will be a lot of free banding going on, I'm assuming. But it's also the government you might have to dodge. Now, if the government is working with you, and it's just a natural thing, you're going to end up with these groups that don't have good intentions and i am suspect that some of these groups are pretty smart or have some smart people that will have such gadgets that are able to listen in decipher decode and track you down in the field um <laughs> Don't think just because they are not in a in a prepping group and they're not an amateur operator that they're stupid. Okay, there are a lot of very smart criminals in prison. Okay, yeah, it wasn't their smarts that got them there. Some of them were smart enough to get put in prison for protection from other groups, other gangs, other people. There are a lot of smart criminals. There are a lot of stupid ones, too. That falls on the lines of street gangs and shit. But there are people that will be listening. They will be scanning the bands. And they probably already know right now where four groups are around my local area. And they use FRS an amateur radio to coordinate uh you know to bug out procedures um routines path um, roads traveled uh and their final destinations where the retreats are i've actually did a mock-up tracing of them and found four separate retreat locations that are pretty well stocked. Now, I'm not the kind of person to go and pull some shit because I could care less. But if I can sit here with computers and radios and track this stuff down and build antennas based off YouTube videos for direction finding and tracking that YouTubers they put up and track them down. Um, one group is using digital and I can decipher that. <laughs> so it's not secure. They're not using any voice encryption. What some of you really need to rethink your wheel in communications. Um, 
either come up with a plan amongst yourselves without getting on the radio and memorizing your script and don't even use the fucking radio at all or invest instead of buying bullets and shotguns for about a couple months put that money into some good radios with voice encryption rolling code encryption or something you know and have them set up professionally okay ham radio is going to probably is going to turn into the number one target finding band for deviants okay you're not safe it's not safe not everybody on the radio is going to be a safety net for people even frs and gmrs you call for help yeah someone's going to come and it may not be who you want okay they might come off as somebody that's helpful until your guard gets let down um, but I suspect that the local amateur radio, 2 meters, uh, 70 centimeters, 900 megahertz, 4 out all in bands, 6 meters, 10 meters, local, you know, local stuff, more or less 2 meters and, and 440 band, are going to be the number one target bands. It's a little harder to track down someone on HF because you don't know if they're in skip mode or not. And HF is not good for crap local, so they'll be using a local frequency. Um, you know, if something bad happens, I do have radios, and you'll never see these radios on camera. But I do have a set of radios that are secure, and they're on an obscure frequency out of a out of a band completely out of a band that you know why would you look there you know but you're never going to see my real radios all you see on my videos are my junk radios you know the analog junk the stuff i never show my real equipment my you know actual stuff i would use in a case of an evacuation emergency where something really bad and dbs is going down you know bad weather and stuff like that we'll use this but you know be prepared for anything i guess um you know a lot of guys groups y'all spend thousands of dollars a month on food ammunition guns bullshit Put some of that money into some good P25 radios, or at least, very least, some DMR stuff, and get you some voice encryption going. Um, it's good to have your ham channels in there, your GMRS channels, whatever. Make sure you abide by all the FCC rules, you know. But also, come up with a frequency that is out of the norm of communications that you would normally think of you know because after shit goes all the way south the FCC is not going to care where you're operating let's be honest here you have a ham license and a call sign that's <laughs> that's just going to be an ID because that's not going to hold any weight anymore when the government's collapsed let's be honest you're going to have people all over the place but they're going to be where other people are so what you need to do is study radio bands for your country, find out where all the traffic is, and try to get as far away from that as possible. And uh, I don't know if any of this is going to help anybody out there with a hard head or not, but, you know, this is reality. All we can hope is that there is no EMP event if shit goes south because if that's the case then all of this is useless you know it's back to fire and candles for light lanterns things like that anyway you know how the liking shit works i'll see you guys later